Okay, how's everybody doing today? We're going to go ahead and start translating parent functions. Make sure you're taking notes and following along. If you have any questions, ask them at the end of the video after you finish your WSQ. And we'll make sure we get them answered tomorrow before our next activities. Uh, first thing when we translate functions, we need to understand what each part of this uh, equation that you see here means. So what we're going to do, we're going to go over each part and what each part stands for. Now if you're going through and you see this A, this is going to tell you whether or not you're going to stretch the graph or if you're going to shrink the graph. And we'll go over that in class on how exactly you do all that. The H here, this is going to tell you whether or not you're moving it to the left, which is a negative number or to the right which is your positive number. The K on the outside of your equation is going to tell you if you're going down which is your negatives or up which is your positive number. So if you look at these three different parts this is what we're going to use to translate our function or move it around on our graph. So if we look at a quadratic if we look at a quadratic function, we're going to look at exactly how this thing moves. So let me set this up for you. Okay, we need to identify what each part is. Okay, first thing is with the A. On this one, the A is equal to 1 because we don't have anything here. That becomes a 1. If you have a 1, there is no change to the shape of your graph. Okay, no, It won't get skinnier or wider or anything. There will be no change to its shape. Your h right here is showing a negative 3. Since this is a negative also in your equation, this is telling you that this is actually inputting a positive 3. Okay, positive 3 means you're going to go to the right three spaces. Okay, and then your K is a positive 1, so you're going to go one space, and since it's positive, you're moving up. So I'm going to do your original parent function on this graph as a quadratic. So let me graph it real quick. You guys will see what I mean as far as our steps. This is our original parent function parabola. We're going through the origin and going through our critical points here. Okay, with a new one, we have these spaces. Let me change colors so you can see your new, um, your new parabola. We need to go three movements to the right from each critical point and one up. So if I go from my origin point here, the, at the center of the vertex of my parabola, I'm going to go over three spaces to the right and up one. This point, I'm going over one, or I'm going over three and up one. One, two, three, one, one, two, three, one. You can see it has the sh same shape starting on both of them. Okay, then I'm going to go from this point, going over three, one, two, three, up one, over three, one, two, three, up one. Same thing over here, going over three, it's going to put me right above my graph. And this is my new parabola on this graph. So I can see that every critical point moved over the same amount. It keeps the same shape, it's going in the same direction, everything about it stayed the same. And I got all this information from my A, H, and K on my translation formula. Okay, now let's look at absolute value. On absolute value, it's the same idea. Okay, so we have the f of x. And the absolute value of x minus h. And the 
pin stopped right in here. Hold on. Okay, pins, pins all fixed. We're going to keep on going. So as we go through this, we can see that the A is still a 1. So if we have an A is equal to 1, that means we have no change again. No change. Our H is a negative 1, which is actually a positive, which means we're going to go to the right one space. And then our K is going to sit at a negative 5. So that means we're going to go down because it's a negative five spaces. Okay, so our original function for an absolute value is going to come down and create a V. You all see it in that direction. Okay, we need to create our new one. We're going to change colors here again. There's no change in our size because it was a 1 in the A position. Your H is a 1 to the right, so we're going to go over 1 to the right for each one, and then down 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's our first point. We got a critical point here. Let's put our other critical point at our 4s. And then uh, we'll go with the 8s here. So I need to go right 1 and down 5 from each point. 1, one, two, three, four, five. Over one, down five. Over one, down five. So our new function, or our new picture of our transformation We'll have our new shape going in this direction. And you can see that the shape hasn't changed, the size hasn't changed, just the positioning on the graph. So that's what we're doing with transformations. Um, when you come into class the next day, we'll go through and we'll go through a few of the transformations and how it works and how it looks. If you guys have any questions, make sure you're asking it. Fill out your WSQ, and we'll go from here. Appreciate it, guys.